Son and to the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, make us worthy in the abundance of your grace and mercy to glorify your resurrection with pure hearts, to celebrate your victory with holy hymns, and to proclaim your might with pure tongues. We thank you for your love and worship you crying out. Christ is risen, he is truly risen. To you be glory, to your Father, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with the church and her children. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise the living and immortal one who gave life to his people by his cross and salvation to his church and happiness to his flock by his resurrection. When he appears, he shall give joy to his inheritance. To the good one be glory and honor on this feast and all the days of our lives and forever. We worship and praise you, O only begotten Son. You descended into the darkness of the tombs and worked wonders in the realm of the dead. By your resurrection you freed the captives, and by your voice you awakened the righteous and the just. Who had gone to their rest in the sleep of death, you gathered the nations to worship you and to proclaim your salvation. They cry out, they rejoice, and they cry out. On Friday the king endured pain and was crucified, and today victory has been achieved by his resurrection. On Friday a lance pierced his side, and today in his compassion the waters of baptism flow. On Friday he was crowned with thorns, and today he has adorned his church with a crown of splendor. Today is the day of rejoicing in the resurrection. Today is the day of rejoicing for all who have gone to to their rest in the hope of your resurrection. Today, with the fragrance of this incense, the church and her children celebrate and sing hymns of glory, saying, O creator of life, you have saved us by your passion and have given us life by your resurrection. Now renew our image by your grace. Clothe our bodies with the power of the Spirit so that we may shine in the robe of glory and in its light to see you, the true bridegroom. In your grace make us and all the faithful departed worthy of your heavenly kingdom, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your Father and to your Holy Spirit forever.
Practice makes perfect. You don't want to do verse 3? Okay. O Lamb of God, who sacrificed yourself for us, we give you thanks. O incense of forgiveness, we worship you, for you have brought us close to your Father, enriched us by your birth, purified us by your baptism, sanctified us by your crucifixion, reconciled us to the Father by your resurrection, and raised us up by your ascension, and adorned us with the gifts of your Spirit. Now, O Lord, accept our incense and fill us always with your sweet fragrance so that our tongues may never cease in giving thanks to you forever. Amen. Kaddishat aloho Kaddishat who died for his people, conquered death to give new life. Lord our God, you accepted what the just had offered you. Now accept in your mercy our pure sacrifice and bread. A reading from the letter of Hebrew. Barak Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish and her children forever. Brothers and sisters, pray for us. For we are confident that we have a clear conscience, wishing to act rightly in every respect. I especially ask for your prayers that I may be restored to you very soon. May the peace of God, who brought up from the dead the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, Jesus our Lord, furnish you with all that is good, that you, 
may do his will. May he carry out in you what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I ask you to bear with this message of encouragement, for I've written to you rather briefly. I must let you know that our brother Timothy has been set free. If he comes soon, I shall see you together with him. Greetings to all leaders and all the holy ones. Those from Italy send you greetings. Grace be with you all. Praise be to God always. Praise, glory, and honor of the Most Holy Trinity. We burn this incense. Kyrie Eleison. Before the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John, who proclaimed life to the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. Remain silent and listeners, for the Holy Gospel is about to be proclaimed to you. Listen and give glory and thanks to the Word of the Living God. The Apostle John writes, after this, Jesus revealed himself again to his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and he revealed himself in this manner. Together were Simon Peter, Thomas, called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, Zebedee's sons, and two others of his disciples. And Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. And they said to him in reply, We also will come with you. And so they went out, and they got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. When it was already dawn, Jesus was standing on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to them, My sons, have you caught anything to eat? And they answered him, No. So he then said to them, Cast the net over the right side of the boat, and you will find something. And so they cast it. And they were not able to pull it in because of the great number of fish. So the disciple, whom Jesus loved, said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he tucked in his garment, for he was lightly clad, and he jumped into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, for they were not far from shore, only about a hundred yards, dragging along the net with the fish. When they climbed out onto shore, they saw a charcoal fire with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish now that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went over, and he dragged the net ashore, full of 153 large fish. 
And even though there were so many, the net had not been torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. And none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because now they realized it was the Lord. Jesus came over, and he took the bread, and he gave it to them, and in like manner the fish. This was now the third time Jesus was revealed to his disciples after being raised from the dead. This is the truth, peace be with you. And may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead the great shepherd of the sheep, complete you in all goodness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. This letter that we have reading today from the Hebrews is actually the very end of the letter. I think it's kind of obvious, finishing with the salutations. But it's the very end of the letter in which, of course, he's emphasizing communication. So, of course, when we speak about communication, the word means usually talking or these days with social media, typing something, texting. But, of course, the word communication in itself, in the Latin origin, means making one together. Cum unum. Communicatio. To make the action of bringing together. And, of course, today, one of the great originators of modern communication, Bill Gates is the richest man on the planet. Because we've always honored the ability to expand our communications and to speak with people. So what I wanna to do today is to bring you further into this understanding from the point of view of the incarnation and enter more into our Syriac tradition because often I've spoken to you Christmas time in that, we talk about the eternal God who enters into time, and that's absolutely true. But the Syriac church, the Mesopotamia, Syria, the provinces which are now the countries of Israel, Syria, Jordan, these areas, what they emphasized in the Christianity was not what God was doing by entering into time for our redemption but what God had done to a man who was conceived in the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary. That the child who is born, who is completely God and completely man. And the reason why they emphasize it is because in the Syriac vision, in this Jewish Christianity, the vision was upon who Jesus of Nazareth was, the Messiah, and in his transformation, it became the guarantee or the surety for what God intended to do to each of his disciples. And so it was less about God's choice entering into time, though they always recognized that, but because God is always the hidden God, it wasn't so much about what his desire had been to do, but the revelation of the kingdom in the person of Christ. It's why in our Syriac tradition, we've mentioned numerous times, but it's the reason why our Kaddishat, is focused upon our Lord. It's not focused upon the Trinity. What happens is when this, when this liturgical practice passed to the West in Constantinople and that, they interpreted it as being for the sacred Trinity. You sing it three times, they recognize what they do is they place it Father, Son, and Spirit. But in the Syriac tradition has always been focused upon God incarnate in front of us. The communication itself bringing together God and man. And in fact, we'll be able to talk about this at greater length on Wednesdays, is that this actually is what causes the huge theological discussions, if not arguments, 
in the 400s of how we see the person of the Christ. So in the Syriac tradition, the focus is upon the communication who is the Lord God himself in the Messiah, in the Christ, because of what it does for the sacred humanity, for the man who is assumed into the divinity. And so it, it, it's not too surprising when you understand the history of the kind of earthiness of Semitic thought, first of all, in the Old Testament, and just kind of the Semitic culture. And the reason why we're bringing this up is because this coming Wednesday on the 15th, we have the Feast of Our Lady of the Seeds, of the planting. And we have in the middle of the month, in February or January, and in May, and of course with the Dormition, the Assumption in August, you have these mid-month commemorations of the Mother of God. There's a great linking between this woman and the reality of the work of redemption because of who was born of her. And of course, as we said, this transformation of the Messiah. And so there's an association continually with her with the fruitfulness of the land, which is why in the transfer hymn when we have, if you note the verse, we talk about as the good earth receives her seed, so her womb received me, in the person of the word speaking. And the importance that we just want to leave you with today is this idea that when St. Paul communicates to the Hebrew, Hebrews, he's very much bringing up this idea. May the God of peace, who has brought resurrection, transform the Messiah, raised him again from the dead, the great shepherd, the great pastor of all the sheep. May he also complete you in all goodness. Sometimes the trans translations will say, fit you out or something like that. But the idea of completion, again, the word in the Latin literally means to fill out thoroughly when you complete something. So St. Paul is saying at the end of this letter of encouragement, he's saying, May the God who transformed the shepherd himself, the Messiah, accomplish also this a completion, this fulfillment of holiness of all goodness within each of you. It's a very beautiful image. And that's exactly why when we present ourselves before the Lord God, we enter deeper and deeper into this mystery. So in the Syriac view, it's very much focused upon the aspect of the communication of God. And so we take it one more step. When you read the liturgical poetry, you have an image of God sending that the hidden father writes a letter. Now, this doesn't seem to be a big issue for us, and probably for millennials, what's a letter, right? Sitting down and writing something out to communicate. And that's where we have to stop for a moment and consider what Aramaic was. Aramaic, the language that our dialect of Syriac comes from, was the lingua franca, was the universal language for three millennia, 3,000 years. Latin hasn't come anywhere close to that yet, though it's getting there. It's got about another 800 years to go before it reaches that kind of foundational aspect. And even then, it's not Latin as we know it now. It's French and Romanian and Portuguese and Italian. But Aramaic was the language of the communication throughout Mesopotamia, Persia, and the Middle East for millennia. And the word has great importance in this tradition. It's why our theology is expressed in poetry. And so it's quite natural then, understanding the context, that the fathers, the Syriac fathers in this liturgical poetry, speak of the hidden one writing a letter. And the letter is conveyed to Nazareth, where it is given to Maryam of Nazareth. That's why we've mentioned to you that the fathers will speak about the conception of this child taking place through the hearing. And sometimes you'll see some of the ancient pictures will have the Blessed Virgin Mary in prayer with like an image of a dove next to. It's the communication of the word, but it's in communicating that letter 
that it is engraved then on the flesh of the Blessed Virgin Mary. So that we have in the Annunciation that the Father wrote a letter and sent it at the hands of the Watcher. Do you remember, this is our Syriac term for the angels, the Watchers, because they are pure intellect and spirit who always stand before the hidden majesty of God, always awake, and therefore we call them the Watchers. So send this letter at the hands of the watcher to Nazareth to a virgin, Mariam, in whom he was well pleased. And in another place with this imagery, that the Gabriel flew down from on high on the wings of the wind, taking with him a letter from his Lord to bring greeting to Mariam. This he opened and read out, declaring to her, the Lord is with you and from you he shall shine forth. So that Mary last week when we considered was the juncture between eternity and time. Here, <clears throat> it's to see that she is the good earth which initiates the whole work of the new creation. And so as I mentioned to you that Our Lady of the Seeds, this our patroness of planting is this coming Wednesday, the premium, so the first prayer that begins the incense ceremony. It announces the theme, if you want, of the liturgical day. And so if I quote it to you, it's from this Wednesday. It's in the Fenkito, those little blue books that we have floating around. May we be worthy to praise, to confess, and to glorify the word that could not be spoken by creation. The word written on pages of flesh from the pen of our sister Mary the one who was called son of David and was David's Lord. To the good one is due glory and honor now and forever. So of course the premium is always addressed to God, the hidden one. And in this case, addressed in the person of the word because it's focused upon his incarnation. And so the first thing it brings up is that maybe we worthy to confess and to glorify the word, the logos, that creation itself was unable to articulate, to speak. A lot of times you see the parallel when it talks about the, the Blessed Virgin Mary or Simeon carrying the child who carries the world because this child is the creator. And here what they're pointing out is that creation itself was unable to express God's perfection. It's expressed in the Kennebec, which we were admiring this morning. We didn't have an Allen wrench, which is why the doors were open, because the only way I let you in is I had to open them up completely. But what I also noticed is this morning, we had a stunning vision of the Kennebec and the trees across, because you can't see the factory from the center aisle. <clears throat> we really need to pull down that factory. The Kennebec would be quite lovely now with the parks and that, in any case. The Kennebec is an expression of the word. The trees are an expression of the word, but they're all limited. Somebody asked this question the other day, well, why should I go to church? Because the church is where God, re <clears throat> because this person said, well, you know, I go on hikes. Well, that's great, go on hikes. But in the church and the divine mysteries, it's where the word is, where God expresses himself personally to us. When I admire the Kennebec, like I was doing this morning, opening the church, God is communicating, but as creator of the beauty of the river. And that's lovely, but it's not a communication of him personally. That's like admiring the new paint job on your neighbor's house. Show you the color they picked out and the fact that they had it painted is expressing something about them, but it's not them personally. You can be just as ignorant of that neighbor as you were six weeks ago. But when you talk to the person and the person reveals himself, that's a totally different thing. And that's what this means when it says that the creation which was unable to speak the word, speak the logos, that this word was written upon the flesh of Mary of Nazareth, from the pen of our sister Mary, very much bringing it down to this idea of the transformation that takes place. And this is the one who is called in his descent, 
the son of David, and yet who at the same time is David's Lord. That's echoing from the Psalms. So we just want to leave you with another idea of consideration for the Blessed Virgin Mary. Obviously in the secular world we have also the Feast of Mothers. Mothers give life that's going to finish in death. Beautiful, it's life, but it terminates, we know, definitively at the end of our, end of our existence of life. But this mother, who has the eternal word carved into her flesh through the pen. This mother brings forth life which allows us to be introduced to it, which lasts for eternity. The great shepherd of the sheep. And so that the one who is transformed as our surety and our guarantee is the association and in a sense to some degree an identification with Mary of Nazareth. And so now place that in the context of St. Paul's wish at the end of this letter. It says, I've written to you briefly, but may God, the God of peace, who brings restoration and healing and wholeness, may he complete all of you, each one of you individually, in all goodness. Which is why he ends with this last verse. And I beseech you, brethren, that you accept this word of consolation here, this word, even though I have written to you only briefly. So may the mother of God intercede for us and obtain for us this profound vision of eternal wisdom as it has manifested itself in the flesh before us as a guarantee of our own completion in all goodness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
Itel vot ma debed alocho, wal vot alocho dam charet alimut. Weyeb sukot ayvot achayur lel baytok veskudem chayek lo pot kodesho. Sisters, now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you. Out of their love for you and for your holy name, shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. Amen. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, Saint Mary, Saint Jude, and Saint Epiphanius. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers, and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom the sacrifice is offered, for the intentions of all the members of this parish. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering. Amen. Lord God and 
one Father, holy and glorious is your name. You deliver those who love you from all that is contrary to your will. May we, who have remained in your divine love, be made worthy to give one another the greeting of peace with a holy kiss. May we always speak words of peace, think of peace, and work for peace. Through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people, we raise glory to you and to your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace to you, holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O minister of God. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let each one of us give a greeting of peace to his neighbor with love and faith, which is pleasing to the Lord. From all creation, you are peace, reconciling those who are enemies. You are forgiveness to those who sin, and you are comfort to those who are sorrowful. Open the door of your mercy to our petitions, and in the abundance of your grace, accept our prayers. Make us children and heirs of your kingdom through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people, and through your Holy Spirit, now and forever. by all. Angels bless you, humanity exalts you, and all creation glorifies you. Look upon your children who call out to you. With holy and purity and holiness, may we offer you an acceptable sacrifice that we may raise glory to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. of God the Father and the grace of the only begotten Son and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit be with you my brothers and sisters forever and with your spirit let us lift up our thoughts our minds and our hearts we lift them up to the Lord let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship him with humility it is right and just. Truly it is right and just to thank, adore, glorify, and bless the majesty of the one consubstantial Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, a majesty that does not need our glory or become greater with our things. O Lord, those who sing your praises are countless, and they pray out with angelic voices, and with sweet melodies proclaiming. For you have exalted our weak human nature. In your mercy you sent your only Son into the world for our salvation. He dawned from the Holy Virgin like a ray of light from a bright cloud. 
He took the form of a slave, yet truly he is the son of your majesty. He willingly became man to make us divine. He was born from a woman's womb, that we may be born again from a spiritual womb. He became our brother, so through his grace we became your children and heirs. He took us from being slaves and made us your children. He promised us a share in the reward that allows us to call you Abba, Father. He cleansed us from our sins with his precious blood that he poured out for us. For he is your only son. Do this in memory of me. Each time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you remember my death until I come again. We remember your death, O Lord. We profess your resurrection. We await your second coming. We implore your mercy and compassion. We ask for the forgiveness of sins. May your mercy rest upon us. O word of God, who can comprehend that you willingly emptied yourself of your divine glory, who can explain your miraculous birth from a virgin, who can repay you for your saving passion which you freely endured, who can praise your plan of salvation for us. We can only ask of you, a lover of all people, that the sacrifice which we have offered be accepted on your holy altar in heaven, the dwelling place of your hidden divinity in the company of all the angels and saints. Through this sacrifice, may we be worthy of the forgiveness of all our sins. When you come to judge the living and the dead, do not pass judgment upon us, nor deny us, saying, I do not know you. On that glorious and fearful day, do not separate us from you nor cast us out of your paradise to a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. Rather, because of your holy name by which we have been called, look with mercy upon us. In your compassion you have made us worthy of the gift of your forgiving body and blood. So make us worthy to be one with you in holiness as you are one with your Father. For this your church implores you, and through you and with you, implores your Father, saying, Have mercy on us, Almighty Father, have mercy on us. O Lord, as we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them and because of them. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we profess our faith 
in you and we ask you, have compassion on us, O God, have mercy on us and hear us. How awesome is this moment, O my beloved, for the living Holy Spirit descends and rests upon this offering for our sanctification. Let us stand with reverence as we pray. Manin monio, manin monio, manin monio, ni te modoro hojaio kadisho, onachen alainu ala korbono hono. Let this bread, the body of Christ our God, be for us a pledge of life to come, a body that grants us the everlasting joys of heaven, a body that renews our souls and bodies, a body that purifies us of all sin for eternal life. Amen. And let the mixture in this chalice, the blood of Christ our God, be a blood that gives new life to those who receive it, a blood that guides us to the safe harbors and the dwellings of light, a blood that renews our souls and bodies, a blood that purifies us of all sin for eternal life. Amen. O Lord, in your great mercy, when this body and blood is mingled with our bodies and souls, Grant that it may be for the pardon of faults, the forgiveness of sins, and for the everlasting joy and eternal life with all your saints. Amen. We offer you, Lord God, this pure and holy offering for your holy, Catholic, and apostolic Church, which you have redeemed. Gather her children into unity, love, and faith, and guide them into peace and security. We offer it for the pure bishops of the true faith, Francis, the Pope of Rome, Bashar Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Nisrala Peter, our retired Patriarch, Gregory John, our Bishop, the Venerable Priests, the Chaste Deacons, the Pure Subdeacons, and all the Orders of the Church. Teach them the word of truth, so that they may spread it faithfully with justice and holiness May they care for the flock that you have entrusted to them. Give them the proper means to accomplish your will and grant them a long life. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord of goodness, your holy church, and have mercy on all her faithful. In your compassion, heal all the wounded and injured among your flock. Punish injustice and strengthen all our brothers and sisters. Bestow the grace of conversion on all. With your indestructible power, strengthen the bishops of the true faith, that they may be upright and courageous in their apostolic office. May they show fidelity as they stand ever before your eternal justice. Unto your honor and glory, May they prove themselves upright, dauntless, and persevering in the task confided to them to lead all the faithful into the fullness of your redeeming light and glory. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, For the poor and the dejected, for the orphans and widows, for the sick and distressed, and for those tempted by evil spirits, be the guardian and refuge of their lives. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember the Holy Fathers, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, and confessors, especially the holy, glorious, and blessed ever Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint John the Baptist, the messenger and forerunner, who witnessed the betrothal of your holy church to your son, glorious Saint Stephen, the archdeacon and first martyr, and all who pleased you and professed your name, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all 
the faithful departed who have gone to you from this altar and from every place throughout the world, grant them rest in your heavenly dwellings with all your saints, and in your mercy forgive our sins and theirs. Grant rest, O God, to the departed, and forgive the sins we have committed. With or without full knowledge. O Lord, do not deprive us of your mercy, but keep us in the palm of your hand, lest we fall and go astray, so that we may walk on your paths, follow your ways, and do your will. Forgive us and our departed, and pardon all sins and transgressions, hidden and seen, committed with or without full knowledge. Make us worthy of a faithful Christian death that is pleasing to you, and join us to your righteous ones and to those who have done your will, that in us and in all things your blessed name may be glorified with the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. As it was, is now, and shall be forever. sent us your only Son, who is the radiance of your eternity, and he accomplished his plan of salvation for us, that we may come to you. May we call upon you with the prayer that he taught his holy disciples, saying, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Yes, O merciful Lord, we ask for your compassion. By your grace, make us worthy that your glorious name may be made holy in us, that your kingdom come to assist us in our weakness, and that your will dwell within us. Deliver us from all difficult temptations. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, with your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads before the God of mercy, before his forgiving altar, and before the body and blood of our Savior, who gives life to those who partake of him, and receive the blessing from the Lord. O Lord God, you are good and the lover of all people. Look upon those who bow their heads before your majesty and bless them with every spiritual blessing. Do not turn us away when we approach your divine and holy gifts, and let us not be guilty of unworthily receiving the body and blood of your only Son. Rather, make us worthy to share in your holy and life-giving mysteries with purity, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your good and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. 
the grace of the most holy trinity eternal and consubstantial be with you my brothers and sisters forever and with your spirit let each one of us look to god with reverence and humility and ask him for mercy and compassion holy gifts for the holy with perfection purity and sanctity one holy father one holy son one holy spirit blessed be the name of the lord for he is one in heaven and on earth to him be glory forever make us worthy o lord god so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy body and our souls purified by your forgiving blood may our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for new life O Lord our God, to you be glory forever.
Again and again we thank you, O Lord, and we raise glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink, O lover of all people. Have mercy on us. Lord Jesus, you have made us worthy to share in your holy body and in the cup of salvation. How can we repay you for these your gifts and graces and for your goodness? As you have called us to approach this life-giving banquet, make us worthy. So that your body may be mingled with our bodies and your blood with our souls for the pardon of faults, the forgiveness of sins, and eternal life. You are blessed in your kingdom is holy. We raise glory to you, to your Father, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. O God the Father, we bow before you, and we entrust ourselves to your care. We ask you, imploring your mercy, to rest your right hand full of blessings upon us. Assist us, protect us, bless us, and sanctify us by the holy cross of your only Son. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. 
So that I'm sure that that was a devoted child calling his mother to wish her a happy Mother's Day. So may God lavish his choicest blessings upon all the mothers in this congregation and bring you multiple completion in the goodness of God and in life and in virtue for the rest of your days. We also have the card in the back for Father Chris's anniversary, which is next Sunday. And so for those who wish to participate in the spiritual bouquet to say three rosaries for his intentions, then please sign the card in the back and I will present it to him when we go for the celebrations next Sunday. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever.